I don't really want to get in the middle of the feuding between the two powerful families of the Valians here in Nekitaka, but unfortunately, I have already done so by promising to aid Azali Bardato, who is the matriarch of the Bardato family. She is a shrewd and not to be trifled with woman, and she would be one of the few out here that I would seriously hesitate to back out on. I get it. Both families have a multi-generational feud with each other, and it will not end until either they are made to by a higher power, or until one of them wipes the other out. I would rather diplomacy be the guide here, but I do not know how I could accomplish such a thing. So I will do this work for her and see where it goes afterwards. Right now, I must help Shoti to release these burdening souls who are interfering with her sleep and making her fear the end is coming. I just hope this works. If not, I don't know what we will do. But I do know that she is important to me, so she will have my support no matter what. Shoti's starting to worry me. <clears throat> On our way out of the hole, she asks if we're awake, right? So, this is the Luminous Otter Pillar. I'm hoping that she'll be able to unleash the souls that she's been harvesting. And it will help her. Hmm, sure. We'll this do. Luminous Audra ought to be able to take my souls, Watcher. What do you say? Let's try it. A gleaming pillar of Luminous Audra towers above us as Shoti stomps confidently towards its base, a grin ripping wide over her face. Get ready to witness the feat of a lifetime, Watcher. <laughs> I'm about to do God's good work to single-handedly shepherd a multitude of souls straight into the depths of hell. Takehu grins and pats down a nest of his breathing hair. She rubs her hands together, drubs her palms against her hips, and snatches up her lantern, eager, ready. She wriggles her shoulders and pops her neck, stance subtly widening. Be careful, please. Flushing prettily, she glances over her shoulder, just long enough to blow me a sloppy, wet-looking kiss. <laughs> as long as you're watching my back, I'll be fine. <laughs> Sounds good to me. As she exhales those last words, she presses one palm flat to the cold expanse of gem-like growth, fingers trembling, and like a firework going off, the light from her lantern flares blindingly bright. Whoa. Electricity, no, hypercharged soul energy whips across the air, lashing open Shoti's skin, traveling the pathway of a thousand branching veins and capillaries. The striking bursts Shoti bloody from face to neck to arms and lower, and she screams, her voice a secondary crack across the sky. Release the souls! The words rattle from between clenched teeth, ripped from her convulsing body, but she doesn't let go of the Audra that's searing her palm. The lantern trembles so violently it nearly cracks. Then a massive wave of purple essence rushes from the lantern. It swirls up and around the Audra, crashing along the glimmering surface before being sucked inside. Ah, oh, sh Shoti's hurt. The Audra pulses brighter, then darker, then even brighter blinding. There's a howling, then the Audra cracks, and a jagged shard tumbles to the ground. Uh-oh. Oh, son of a god's darn motherless cur! That hurt worse than a back-to-back -back whooping from Uncle Angbert's quarterstaff. <laughs> Hell, and I only gotta do it again and again on cycle until the day I die? You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Oh, but the guild says I do. I can't turn my back on my purpose any more than I could Aora in need. Maya smirks and playfully taps Ishia, Ishiza with her toe. I never did want to take the easy route. She nods. I'll keep reaping more souls then. Do my duty till I fall to dirt and bones. Never you worry though. I'll see to dumping my lantern in the future on my own. Oh, Shoti. Yeah, and then you go and die doing it on your own. And that's where I find your corpse. Takehu grins and pats down a nest of breathing hair. This is a problem. Thank you for finding me a way to handle my burden. Even if it does involve the occasional jolt of pain. Chest heaving, 
Shoti scrabbles for the Adra shard embedded in the ground. The crystal is slick with blood from her palm. She shoves it into her pocket. Then she shakes her head. Darn if I don't feel so loud, I could float away. Okay, don't talk like that. Shoti casts an odd look to her darkened lantern before turning me a whimsical smile. That looked like it hurt. <sighs> Never felt anything so painful in my whole life. I don't know if this is what Gon planned for me, but I'd like to think we did right by these souls. Oh, I believe that's true, but I don't know if you should be doing this. Takehu rocks back on his heels, nodding to himself. We're bringing light to the darkness. Ensure in spring follows the common fall. She adjusts her hands on her hips before setting off at a determined clip. The price may be too much. What if it gets worse each time? No, I'm not in favor of her doing this. I don't know what to say to her, though, but if I try to turn her away from it, she'll think I'm trying to turn her away from Gone, and that might be the end of us. Hmm. Anyways, let's go back to uh, Queen's Birth. On our way to Queen's Birth, we're traveling the streets of Nekitaka, just outside the, just past the gullet, when we hear the familiar voice nearby. As we follow the winding streets of Nekitaka, the usual city sounds of cartwheels against cobbles and shouting vendors fades, replaced by the cacophony of a heated argument on the verge of boiling over. As we follow the winding streets of Nekitaka, um, sorry, one of the voices rings familiar. Rum Dum Regeer from the Defiant. Ah. And approach the commotion. As I round the corner, I see Rum Dum Regeer surrounded by a group of unfamiliar soldiers. From their dress, I don't believe they're locals. They shout at Rum Dum Regeer, who returns the yelling with interest, though I can't make out the actual matter of the argument. One of the sailors shoves Rum Dum Regeer against a wall and the hand of another thug lingers dangerously near his weapon. Okay, this is where I intervene. Rum Dum Regeer's eyes meet mine and widen. Captain, thank the gods, I could use a hand here. Captain, the unfamiliar sailor scowls as he looks me over. You should teach your sailors better manners. This sod fool got sick all over our boots. Her compatriots nod, eyes searching me. Well, I'm sorry about my mate's behavior, but I can't let you make them unfit to serve. I don't suppose an apology would suffice? Huh. The sailors look to one another, and one nods. She looks at to Rundum Regeer, and let's hear it. Rundum Regeer gives me a sad glance, then looks back to the woman. Sorry, ma'am. What was that? The other sailors snicker. Sorry, ma'am. The woman salutes me, then turns on her heels. The sailors walk away. Rum Dum Regeer approaches me, grinning openly. Thanks, Captain. You truly saved me just now. Be more careful. Next time I might not be there to save you. Yes, Captain. Rum Dum Regeer heads off towards the ship, whistling along the way. Well, that's where we're going. Well, you think Andra's got something in mind for you, Takehu? For me to exist in this form and to join this crew? I know she does. <laughs> it's funny. I fought against Aethys. I'm chasing him now. I don't think he knows a thing about me. Nikera, it is for us to show the gods why we are worthy of notice. Yeah, I guess we'll see about that. Hmm. Okay, right, return to where we came. See, I was under the mistaken belief that we were about right here. <laughs> Rum Dum Regeer. Hmm. I was warned about his antics. Get, get me into trouble by that veiling prison guards one. Guards woman, I guess I should say. Okay, so where is it? Uh, not Definitely not the Valera estate, the Bardatos. I thought it was right next. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's up there. Their homes are so close to each other. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, evening's coming on. It's a good time to go talk to the Bardatos, though. We're going to be setting sail soon. Just have to go to the Valen Trading Company headquarters before we leave after this. That's the goal. Hmm, so do I remember where she was yet? She's on this floor. Very nice home. Zali. My intelligence speaks of agitated whispers in the Valera household. Zali sets aside her paperwork and glances my way. I want to talk about the Valera plot against your house. Have on, then, and don't leave me in suspense. She leans in closer, her eyes boring into mine. I learned from a burglar named Persa that there's a plot to break into your vault. A sicko of a smile spreads from cheek to cheek. Now we know enough to sidestep this particular trap. Here, your deserving pay. She sets a bag of coins upon the desk. Really? I could have just made that up. I suggest we allow this heist to play out as intended. We will watch as our enemies walk into a trap. <laughs> okay, very interesting. This will be the end of the Valera's short ignoble reign in high society. Hmm. It's not... Just talk to Atello. It's not too late to solve this peacefully. It most decidedly is. Hmm. I have no use for a faint heart. Find me when you come to your senses. Uh, okay. Speak up. My business never sits still for long. I've decided I'm with you, Azali. What should I do? Speak to Captain Villamy. You will find him downstairs in the vault. Azali nods to her guard and then waves to dismiss me. Should be a way to f deal with this peacefully, but I don't know. Hello, I think you're the captain. I take I'm it to that talk to? Sally clued you into the plan. The worry lines running down his guard's face speak to years of duty and command. He scrutinizes me with a cautious, if friendly, expression. You will wait in the shadows of the vault. We will bring up the rear with reinforcements. Okay. I'm open to questions until we begin execution of the plan. Hmm. What do we do once the thieves arrive? We do what comes naturally. He touches the pommel of his sword. It's Sally wants this handled cleanly and without loose ends. I am sure that the thieves as well prefer direct confrontation over the alternative. What's in this vault anyway? A modest sum and a few cobwebs. We've relocated most of the wealth and the valuables. Okay. Relocated to where? Beyond your reach, lady. Even if we're getting the drop on these Valera scum, I'm not about to stake a client's fortune on our success. Hmm. Wouldn't it be easier just to kill the Valeras now? We cannot arm Otello with any indictment against the Bardatos. Okay. If he told the Juana that we struck first, we will all end our days in the gullet. Okay, I'm ready. Let's get started. I don't intend on losing any good men or women tonight. He looks me over and nods. My guards will keep a low profile and watch out for the Valeras. Be sure you do the same. Merla! Hitzali is sharper than she lets on if she knew we were coming. Surrender now, and I offer you mercy. I make no promises that I'll follow through. Villami grins. The burglar slowly brings her hand closer to her weapon. Hmm. Lay down your arms, thief. The odds are in our favor. 
The odds can turn when you're distracted by too much talk. Velda winks and raises her pistol. She squeezes off a shot at Captain Villamy. The bullet catches him in the arm, and he reels away with a pained cry. For your lives, boys! At them! Velda raises her pistol and readies to fire. Okay. Get in there. And... Yeah. I'm going to hit Velda from the back. One is down. Well, they didn't last very long now, did they? That was a very easy fight. It's a good thing her aim was about as shaky as her plan. Villami winces as he applies pressure to his wounds. Go on and head up to it, Sally. She'll want to hear what happened. You're gonna be all right. I've seen worse. I'll have someone fetch a qualified chirurgeon who knows how to pull out cheap bullets. Valami winces again and dismisses me. Yeah, it's not the greatest of uh, equipment that they had. The yep, pleasure is mine. I would say in the end that this is going to weaken the Valians. I don't know. Maybe the Bardatos will... Without this feud, maybe they'll be stronger. I, I just don't know. It's hard to tell. But one group in a, basically a civil war. I can't see how that's going to help the Valians. Postinago. What fools these Valeras are to think I would not protect what is mine. Izali inhales sharply. Mela, it is the end of enough. I would see a thorough bleed for this. Hmm. You do realize that would be murder. And you choose now to feel a spasm of conscience. I had one from the beginning. I just thought we're here to stop burglars from breaking in. Atello has led his family into their present misfortune. Kill him, and what remains of his litter of jackals will destroy itself. Mm. It hardly needs to be said that I'll reward you handsomely, but I will say it all the same. Do we have a bargain? I'm no assassin, Azali. Sorry, I'm not going to do it. It's not a difficult profession to pick up. Think on it. No. And if you don't have the strength to do that with your own house, your own family, I'm not going to do it. It's one thing to stop burglars. It's another thing to go and kill the head of their family and hope that it all falls apart afterwards. But with that... Okay. Well, it is getting late. I hope the villain trading headquarters is open for us to come and see their leader. We did get the invite after we met with the queen for the first time. And maybe though they talked about Pelagina coming and joining us, so maybe if we go there, Pelagina will be there and she'll be ordered to join with us, even though I don't think that she really likes me anymore. But I had nothing to do with her making the right decision over the Valian Republics. Oh, uh, it's locked. If you've come on business with the Valian Trading Company, it will have to wait until morning. We're closed. The guard tips her head in warning. There's no need for you to be here after hours. Moving on. Hmm. All right, farewell. Well, I don't see what else we can do. We've just been wandering the city all day. Well, for most of the, much of the day, back and forth. Let's just go and 
take a rest, and hopefully Shoti will be better come morning. I hope that uh, there's no bad will happen since what we did with releasing the souls into that luminous order of Now, what can I do for you? Show me what you have for sale. If you see anything you like, you let me know. Okay. Yeah, let's rest. And Shodi is injured from that uh, when she releases souls, so hopefully she'll be better come morning. Okay, so far so good. To the Valian Trading Company, right close by here, so it's not like we have to walk for hours. And hopefully we'll see again. Uh, very early in the morning. So what happens if you dry out too much? <laughs> if it is Ngati's desire that I stay moist, she will hasten the rain. Oh my. He really does think high of himself, doesn't he? Ah. Yeah, we're gonna have to just... Wait. We'll have to wait. Okay. Well, the sun has peeked over. The guards went in. Oh, there's Pelagina. Hello again. Ado, Watcher. The Cantonicesi sent for me. It seems the Republics have need of me again, thanks to you. It is difficult to read her expression. The corners of her mouth briefly twitch into a smile, but there is worry in her eyes. Do you have need of me? Um... I will always have need of you, Pelagina. You're very good with your sword and your rifle. Good. She nods sharply and steps forward. Okay, so I'm going to tell Adair. I'll see you when I see you. Dismiss Adair and bring in Pelagina. And what else? Shoti, with her healing power, is going to stay with us for a while. But we've had a Takehu for quite a while, and if we're going to leave. Soon. I'd, I'd want to loft with us. I mean, he can't heal, but he can sure as heck hit hard with his spells. At your service, Watcher. It's too bad I can't just bring everyone. Hey, looking over Pelagina's weapons. Great sword. Hmm. Yeah, she had a, a blunderbuss. She had a pistol, is what I remember. But I'm, I think I out. When she was working with me, she was outfitted with a, um, if I remember right, a uh, rifle. Maybe I've forgotten. Uh, defiant. Uh, okay. Well, this, she's wearing a decent, it's a specialized breastplate, so, I mean, I guess that's okay. But as for her weapon, greatsword, I don't have anything like that. I'd prefer if she used a shield, personally. So I ask her what she's trained with. Mace, sword, so the same as me. Pistol, greatsword, and unarmed. Hmm. But not a shield. If she were to use a sword and a shield, she would be, she'd have a lot more defense. And she can't wear anything over her head because of her hair and feathers. Hmm. We don't even have a fine pistol for her. Oh, wait, we do. Fine pistol. Blunderbuss. Uh, this is a better weapon. Or, uh, yeah, just one pistol. 
I'm going to need her to charge in there. I just I don't have the confidence without Adair being in the group. Mm. We'll see how she does. And I hope she, we don't get into any really terrifically dangerous fights in the meantime. Uh, I think we're supposed to go see the governor. Of course. You have business here. The guard holds up a hand, appraising me in a few sweeping glances. Uh, I've just come from Port Maje. Governor Clario suggested I might find work here. You are in luck. The governor is between meetings. Go on in. Hello again. Standing next to her desk and lost in thought, Governor Alvari looks at my approach. Her expression of intent, focus, thaws instantly, and she greets me with a startling, sunny smile. Yeah, this isn't the person that I met in the uh, Queen Anakazi's meeting that we had. It was a male uh, Valian. The Watcher. From the palace, yes? You made quite the impression on the Cantonese. He went on for ages. Welcome. Make yourself comfortable. The Cantonese. Count of Nicesi, a title owned by Nero, son of the Duchess Sparento. That must be who we met. I am Lueva Alvari, governor in residence of the Valian Trading Company here in Nekataka. What brings you to my door? I met your representatives at the palace. They mentioned you might have work for a watcher. They speak the truth. A watcher is welcome in these times. Under different circumstances, I'd write up papers for an emissary's posting, no? But we have a situation that needs immediate attention. How much do you know about the Luminous Adra trade? Hmm. I know Aethus is looking for it. Yes, they warned me you had some interesting notions. Let's just say he isn't alone, then. Every viable deposit is of interest to us. Cartographers, surveyors, at any moment we have a dozen expeditions underway. Some weeks ago, we received word of a large quantity of luminous adra on a distant island. Pukukohara, it is not charted on any of our maps. However, Pukukohara is said to neighbor the island of Tikawara, and we've already made contact with the natives there. We dispatched an expedition to Tikawara with instructions to locate the Adra site and determine its value. Our people have neither returned nor sent any word on their progress. Alvari spreads her hands in a gesture of helplessness. We are too long a delayed, and someone must finish the job. A watcher can determine if there is essence in the Adra, if it is worth the trouble and investment to remove it. Information for which we are willing to pay. Hmm. You want me to find your people? Ideally. But if the worst has come to pass, I would like you to complete the investigation of the Adra deposit. Anything that may assist the company. What do you know about Poco Kahara? Not much, unfortunately. A few superstitions among the locals. But they're unusually tight-lipped about the subject. Hmm. So that's it. What if the Adra's worthless? Then it is worthless, and we save ourselves wasted effort. Either way, you will have fulfilled your end of the bargain. Here, I will mark Tikawara on your map. This will be of some use to you, I think. It entitles you to act as a commissioned agent of the Valian Trading Company. Present it, and you will be recognized as such. Alvari presses a document into my hand. Okay, I have a Valian Trading Company writ of commission now. Until then, I believe we're finished. Return here once you have word of our agents and our prize. Oh, and take care upon the open sea. There are greater hazards in these waters than a few pirates. All right. Well, thank you. I'll see what I can find. Guess we have a new uh, right. job to do among all the others out there in the ocean. And there's really no reason to stay here anymore, so I think it's time we set sail.